The best season of the year is almost here, so today we are painting autumn leaves in watercolor. If you love all things autumn as much as I do, stick around and paint with me. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel I teach watercolors, illustration, journaling and much more so consider subscribing if you're new here. And I just want to take a sec to mention that I recently created my first e-course all about drawing and illustration. It's for the absolute beginner. It's a little more comprehensive than what we normally do on the channel. So if you're wondering about line shading and perspective and you'd love to draw flowers as much as I do, I'll put a link in the video description so you can check it out and treat yourself. So I am going to start today by drawing all of the leaves first. I've got some graph paper here and that's what I'll do my sketch on. And then underneath here I've got some cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper from Canson. And I do not always draw my leaves out before I paint, but sometimes it is nice to lay them out and figure out your design. So that's what I kind of wanted to show today as well as painting the leaves. So I'm writing my little title there. And then the first leaf I'm going to do is sort of an oak leaf and I'm going to place him right up top here and he'll be upside down. Drawing them really allows me to think about the shape of the leaves and kind of get into the headspace where I'm going to be comfortable painting them. The next one I start with a stem in the middle and then I do all these little branches going off that center stem and then each little branch leads to an oval shaped leaf and you can see me sort of making a guide here for each leaf. I'll sometimes draw a straight line going out and the line helps me to keep the leaves really balanced and symmetrical. I'll go over this in pen so that you can see it, but I think you get the idea. And this one is a lot of fun to paint once we do start going over it in watercolor. But for the moment, I'm just placing it on the page and working out the shape and doing that in pen. It really does help when it's time to paint. Now under the title autumn leaves, I'm going to place some tiny little berries with just a couple leaves. Then I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to do some larger sort of rose hip type berries. So there's two large circles. We'll join them with a stem. And then after uh, they've got branches or a stem there, all I want to do is do a grouping of leaves. So I might do two or three leaves grouped together and I like to overlap them a little bit for a natural look. And I always like to tuck a few leaves in behind the berries as well. All right, I'm going to try drawing a maple leaf next. So I start with a line and then an X through that line. This is just my guide. Uh, and now that I've got my guide set up, I'll use each point as a reference for the points of the leaf or even the sections of the leaf. And you can see me doing that here as I begin to draw this very sort of weird <laughs> maple leaf. But uh, this is, you know, how I get started when I'm not sure how to do something. I always try to do a guide to help me with symmetry. And you can see me in pen here working out the shape a little bit better. It does not have to be perfect. I will come back to that. <laughs> um, finally, I'm going to do a simple leaf here. I just do an oval shape. So I start with the oval shape guide and then I give that leaf lots and lots of little teeth and a nice jagged edge. Okay, so now that I've got the design done or the layout, I'm going to work on it with tracing paper. So I lay the tracing paper over and that allows me to keep what I like about my drawing and change what I don't. And this is especially important when we're thinking about layout. I want all these leaves to be arranged in a really pleasing manner. So what I can do is if I want this leaf on a bit more of an angle, I can just angle it slightly and then trace over it. So I like the shape of this leaf but I just want to change its placement or its angle within the composition. So that's what I'm doing here is kind of moving everything around, making sure that everything is spaced nicely and uh, that I'm sort of making a design of leaves that's almost circular on the page. And um, then I can also take a moment to rework my maple leaf. So again, on the tracing paper, I'm going to do that guide with the line and the X. And then what I decided to do was go further with the guide and uh, kind of just draw the areas of the leaf. 
So now you can see I've got these five sections and I'll use my pen and I'll add a raggedy edge to the perimeter of the leaf and it's still very wonky and perfectly imperfect but I'm liking it a little bit more. Okay, so that's my composition. It's kind of circular and I think I just need to even it out or balance it a bit better by adding one more leaf at the bottom here. So that's what I'll do. I'm starting in pencil and this one, it's sort of like a small maple leaf that's maybe in motion. And so it's just very simple. And I am going to tape this trace onto my watercolor paper, throw some uh, transfer paper under there, dark side down, and then I'm going to start transferring the design and the thing that I'm doing today that's a little different than normal is I'm not transferring it in its entirety I'm basically just tracing the stems of each leaf because with watercolor leaves I want to have a chance to allow the paint to hit the page and do its own thing I don't want to have too many stiff lines kind of boxing me in so let's lift this up so you can see what I really mean so what I've transferred here is just enough to help me keep the composition that I work so hard on but the edges the smaller details the translucent bits they can still be really loose and watery with no harsh line underneath for supplies today I am using my Derwent pocket set it's a little set of 12 pans the paints are awesome they're very nicely pigmented and I'm just starting to mix up some uh, reds and browns right now and I'm also using an animal hair round brush it's a number four I'll link something similar in the description. Okay, so here you can really see what I was talking about a second ago there. The stem is going to help me keep this leaf exactly where I want it, but there's no harsh dark graphite lines underneath the leaves. So those I'm free to paint and I'm free to work the shape out in paint with my brush so that I get this really beautiful loose watercolor look. And you can see me creating the shape of the leaves as I normally do by dragging the belly of the brush across the page and then using the tip of the brush to add a little bit more fine detail to the end of the leaf or, or to add a little extra pigment. I'm also going to use the tip of that round brush. The tip is great on a round brush because it's very fine. It comes to a nice point so you can use it for lots of detail work while still, still having the large belly of the brush to do um, bigger areas like the leaves. So I'm using the tip of the brush to do the stem here. And then of course I'll use the belly again to drag out the, uh, the leaves on the other side. Um, but this leaf design is coming together with just a few uh, different shades of brown, a nice peachy brown for the leaves, darker brown for the stem. And I like to pull the brush towards me when I'm painting, when I'm doing these leaves. So if it ever helps you to, you know, rotate your page, go for it. There's uh, nothing saying you have to paint this painting um, you know from one angle or anything like that I'll release a little bit of darker more pigmented paint into both ends of each leaf I think that just is a nice little detail and when you let it seep out it looks so pretty and then that's all done Okay, moving on to the next one. You can see all I have for the guidelines here is sort of the bottom of the leaf and the stem. And that gives me lots of freedom. So I'm starting with the bottom, but then I'm gonna use the brush, the belly of the brush, and drag it across the page to start creating the other sections of this leaf. And uh, I'm looking at my drawing as I do this, so I kind of know where I wanna go. And I'll just work the paint out there. And I think it might, might need one more little section. I, I just felt like it needed a little more movement and that looks really nice. And then we'll paint in the stem and that's just a nice simple little leaf. Of course, some of these leaves, it's for making them autumn, it's just all about making them brown and red, but some of them are definitely new for me. So this next one is uh, we start with the stem and then you're taking your brush and you're just pulling it out towards you 
And I think you can see where this is going by having your brush stroke come to a little bit of a point at the end, you're able to make the jagged edge of this leaf and uh, you sort of do, you sort of create the leaf one paint stroke or one brush stroke at a time, but it comes together. And I think it's a way to let the paint sit on the page really naturally. And uh, it's just fun to paint it this way. So instead of sort of coloring in um, a transferred image that you might've had on the page, you're giving yourself a little more freedom. And then it's nice to turn it right side up so you can see what it looks like. I found that the teeth or the edges were just too large. So I'm sort of filling in and making them a little finer and pointier. Next, I wanna tackle these berries and they should be pretty straightforward because the whole stem has been transferred to the page. So all I have to do is place a little berry, which you can see is really just one stroke of the brush or maybe two <laughs> at the end of each little branch that I've got here. So I'm using a nice dark purple and I love the way that looks. I'm going to mix up this really nice peachy brown for my next leaf. And uh, this one, I am doing much the same as the, the other one where we did it in sections. So I'm going to place five uh, sort of leaves leaf shapes on the page, but then I'm going to join them together with some extra paint. So that's just my trick for making sure that the uh, the edges don't look too forced. Um, it's never good to sort of paint the perimeter of an object in watercolor and then fill it in. You always want those nice loose edges. So that's my trick for that. And I'm coming back in here and just uh, using a dark brown to go over the stems of the berries. Then I'm dropping down to my rose hips or my larger berries and adding that same dark brown to that stem. And for these berries, I am mixing up a nice rich burgundy color. It's great when you're working in a similar color palette like autumn colors. You can, you know, grab a little brown from this one and add it to the pink and then add a little more purple or a little more red to that one. So when you have a nice palette full of mixed up paints, you can achieve some colors that look really natural or look really natural within the piece that you're working on. So you sort of begin to make your own palette as you go. Now I'm painting in my rose hips here, um, just being sure to leave a little highlight along the top. And then I am going to jump ahead and do my maple leaf. Now I am going to start the maple leaf by mixing up a nice peachy red and then a sort of orangey uh, yellow color. So I've got two colors mixed up on the palette and ready to go. Then I'm going to take that peachy red and begin filling in my leaf. Now here, I was a little nervous about the maple leaf, so I've given myself a bit more of a guide. You can see there's a lot more of this leaf transferred to the page than most of the others. So I'm beginning to fill that in and create some nice jagged edges there. And I'm, again, I'm using that darker peachy red that I mixed up. Then I'm going to add some water to it so that I'm getting some areas that are a little lighter, some that are a little darker. I want to um, achieve some nice variation of color within this larger leaf. Then I'm taking that yellowy orangey color and I'm going to come up to another section of the leaf and start painting with some of that. So I think you can see where this is going. I want to sort of blend these two together. So I'm using some more uh, watery translucent paint to come over here and blend the orange into the red. And uh, I think this looks really, really pretty and gives that wonderful autumn effect where the leaves are just so multicolored and so pretty. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna fill this in. Definitely want there to be some lighter spots and some darker spots. So again, I add a little bit of water to the paint and that helps to uh, have a nice light translucent area within the subject. Um, and my color palette today was something that I thought about a lot because I'm not someone who loves uh, warm colors. I don't work with reds and oranges very often. So what I've done here is I've put a lot of peach and pink into my reds and oranges so that I still have a color palette that is, you know, that works for me. And you can see as it comes together, it's all peachy browns and peachy reds and purples and pinks and, and those are the colors that I really love. 
So here I just want to balance out my composition or my final piece with one more leaf and this is basically just a leaf that I paint all the time but by making it this golden yellow um, it looks really like a fall leaf like an autumn leaf so <laughs> if you have some uh, leaves that are your go-to's of course you can always just switch up the color and just a tip if you want to achieve some of that variation that I'm talking about take a dry brush and sop, sop up some of that paint a dry brush works as an eraser and again on variation you can also add darker paint at any point to these wet areas and if the painted area is still somewhat wet that's great because the paint will seep out into that wet area in a really natural way Here you can see me adding a little bit of color to these leaves of the rosehip or the berries. I'm using a light, light green on one side of the leaf and then a darker green on the other side. And then I'm blending with sort of a medium green so that the contrast isn't too harsh and it looks natural. I'm also using a really grayed out minty green and that's another thing I wanted to mention. It's part of my color palette. I'm keeping it cool. I'm keeping things from getting too warm and you can see here that I decided to change up the color of the berries as well. Now that all the leaves are painted, we can come back in and do a little wet on dry painting and start adding details like veining. I'm using the tip of my round brush to start adding some very delicate veins to these leaves. Of course, this one, I sort of messed it up. So anytime you make a mistake, you can always just get a little water and blend it out, you know, just make it look like shading and then try again, let it dry and try again. And uh, yeah, just you can either use the tip of your round brush or a very tiny fine brush like a number zero or double zero and you're just adding these delicate lines they can be a little bit broken they can be very perfectly imperfect um, I like to pull the brush towards me as I'm working and that helps and uh, for this one I'm just doing the stem down the center and then just a few veins and I want to make them uh, different sizes some are thin some are a little thicker and then for this guy over here, I'm taking a very dark purple and I'm carefully making some very, very thin, tiny veining lines that are super close together. I don't want all of the plants on the page to be quite as detailed. Some of the items just need a bit of shading like these berries, um, just a nice darker paint. And then this leaf here, similar thing, a bit of a darker red and I just sort of splash it on there without really thinking about it too much. And it just gives a nice contrast within that leaf without adding a ton of detail. Some of them I'll add fine details, but just not quite as many like this one here. I'm doing a very loose veining on the leaves and uh, then it, we are back to our maple leaf, my most complicated leaf. So this one, we're going to go back to that first guide, the idea of the line with the X through it. And we're placing those lines again. You can see me doing those five lines. Once those are in place, we start drawing the veining and then it's like working on five different leaves you just do those simple little veins and they can be so broken and so thin and perfectly imperfect don't worry about it too much and if you make any mistake you can bleed it out with a little bit of water or a translucent paint or you can add a little bit of light paint at any point if you just think it would look nice and that's what I'm doing here I also added some uh, some of the veining in yellow and I thought that was kind of pretty or it's more of like an orangey color I guess and then I I'm adding a little bit of extra orangey peach paint to create some more contrast within the leaf. Okay, that is it. I am super happy with the way this piece turned out. I had a lot of fun working on the composition and then painting these leaves and adding all the details. I want to use my Pigma Micron to write in the title of Autumn Leaves. And so I'm just carefully going over that. And then I decided that I would like to add a couple uh, pink leaves so you can see those there they're just sort of filler and I really wanted the pink to round out that cool color palette that I mentioned well guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and that you're as excited about autumn as I am don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon with a new tutorial
Thank you.